Hey guys, it's Sarah, and welcome to my channel. End of summer's been a little hectic with starting school and various projects and such, so I'm a little behind getting a video out to you guys, but this one should be kind of cool. I'm going to show you guys how I put together this really awesome sign for the craft fair that's coming up. So I wanted something that could hang sort of perpendicularly to my tent so that people could see it when they're walking down. I wanted it to not only attract, but the festival is actually a fall fest and it's going to be going from like noon to nine. So it's going to be dark for the last couple of hours. So not only did I want it to be able to attract people during the day, I wanted it to attract people during the night. Not only did I make cool looking letters with my logo, I made it light up too. So this was quite a design process and I actually ended up mixing together two of my skills, 3D printing as well as laser cutting to complete a final piece that looks really nice and polished. And I am looking forward to show you guys how I went about this using 3D software on my iPad and then moving it over to Bamboo Studio and Lightburn. I'm going to show you kind of assembling it, how I laid out the light. And then I'm going to talk about some issues that I ran into along the way and things that you can do to avoid making the mistakes I did. All right. So with that said, let's get started. So the first thing I typically do when I'm coming up with a project like this is to make some sketches in my engineering notebook. These don't have to be complicated sketches at all. In fact, they're usually just simple doodles of what I want to do. Occasionally, I will also create some drawings with shapes as well as a side cutout, which helps me then when I go over to the software to create my designs. So I started off with modeling the sign in Shaper 3D, which is, of course, my favorite software. I know I've talked about it a little bit. I'm not going to go through every single step of the modeling process with this because I didn't record all of it. But to give you guys a little bit of insight into how I modeled this, I imported a sketch of my logo and drew the shape of the sign around it with just a simple ellipse tool. From there, I proceeded to essentially extrude the shapes that I needed. The inside portion of the model was 3D printed and it started off as extruding the entire shape of the sign and then I basically cut out the letters with the plan that that was going to be where the light would hide and I made the middle thick enough so that I could put the lights on the side to try and prevent directly seeing the individual lights that way it would have more of a glow. The inside 3D portion, the letters are slightly smaller than what is cut out in the acrylic to create a little bit of a lip for the 3D printed letters to sit on. And there are two ways to do that. One of the ways would be to create an offset inside here within the sketch or the letters, or you could potentially create that offset over in Lightburn, which is the software that I use to do the laser cutting. Both would be an option. It might even be a little bit quicker actually to do it over in light bar. I ended up doing it over here. When I had that created, then I worked on creating the 3D printed letters and basically I extruded them and then I used the shell feature, which makes it very easy to essentially take the completely opaque shapes. And if you click on one side of them, you can then open up the letter so that it essentially creates an open box. Initially, I played around and had the letters being 1.5 millimeters thick, but that was way, way too thick and they were opaque and you couldn't see the light through it. So I ended up going back in and changing it to 0.5. One of the nice things about Shaper 3D is the recent addition of the history function where I can actually go back in and adjust a setting that was done in the past. So I was able to click the shell function for these letters and change it from 1.5 to 0.5. So it made doing the work much easier. Once I had all of my shapes created and I did a little bit of it organizing, I then exported out the 3D prints using the .3MF format. And then I also was able to export the sketch of the top, the sketch of the model, which I was then able to send over to Lightburn to do the cutting. So in terms of cutting the shapes in Lightburn, it's a fairly easy process. I just import the sketch and then I kind of rearrange things as I need it. The additional offset sketch came in and so I just simply deleted those letters. And then I pulled the Cthulhu guy and the Studio and Star portion off the board because those were going to be cut in black acrylic a little bit later. The rest of it, I just kind of adjusted and lined up. What I did end up finding out later on 
after doing um, some letter printing is that these were actually lightly off a little bit and it would make sense to go ahead and offset the letters in the center by or by just a small amount, like 0.1 millimeter, just because with the 3D printing, everything kind of gets lined up and there may not really be space and you need just a little bit of wiggle room to set the letters in. I ended up having to go back and adjust all of the letters and reprint them because I didn't have enough acrylic, but save yourself a headache and make sure to just do this over on your laser printing software to create a little bit of an offset. Outward, it will save you a headache further down the line. Now, over in bamboo, I laid out my 3D bodies for printing. What I didn't show here today, and I may make a short quick video about it in the future, is how to actually cut up 3D printed parts that are too big for your plate. In this case, the center body portion of the sign that I created was going to be way too big for the plate. So what I did was I actually split it into four different parts using the split part feature in Bamboo Studio. Period. What's really nice about this is not only does it split the parts, but it allows to create connectors on the side so that you can easily reattach them. One of the keys with splitting parts like this is to make sure you don't accidentally cut a smaller section off in the middle of the letters. I had to play around a little bit and find the right cuts, but actually I made it so that they were four complete pieces, easily connected once I printed them out. What I also did was, of course, group the letters if they were going to be printed the same color. But I did have a couple of single colors, and what's nice about it is that these letters, that I could actually set them on the plate and have the settings adjusted so that it printed by object rather than by layer. That enables it to go and print the one letter and all one color first, stop, change the filament color, and then print the other layer. Period. This reduces waste significantly and enables me to essentially run two jobs at once. Once everything was printed, of course, I popped it off and started doing assembly. I used um, some 3M adhesive tape to connect the pieces together. This stuff's really cool. A lot of times I'll put it back on the back of my acrylic first and then run it through my laser cutter. It cuts through beautifully. In this case, I opted to just go ahead and put it on the back afterwards because I felt like I didn't necessarily need to cover the entire piece and could probably get away with just smaller sections of it. So a little bit of a material saving feature. But again, if I wanted to, I could totally just cover the entire piece piece of acrylic and print it prior to it probably would have saved me a little bit of stress. I went on to basically adding in my layers. You can see that I did obviously put the adhesive sticker backing on the black portion. Or that made it really easy to attach. One of the things I did was when I was laser cutting, I went ahead and I scored at the location of where the black portion of the acrylic needed to be attached. Basically what this did was it cut through the masking on the acrylic, but it really didn't go any deeper, maybe just a little bit enough to see a faint line of where the shape needed to go. And by doing this, it made it easy to go ahead and position the pieces without really any challenge. The laser cutting settings for this is obviously going to differ per machine. That's something you'll need to test with your own machine because like every piece of acrylic is technically different and every laser cutter machine is different. But once I got the 3D part assembled, then I went in and started putting in this LED strip, that adhesive back, and it was easy enough to run it along the sides. It took a little bit of time, but it was pretty easy to do. In smaller areas, I used a pen to make sure it was secure. I can leave a link in the description to this LED strip that I used. It's not super exciting. The big thing is you want to find a strip that is cuttable because obviously you're going to end up with probably more LED strip than you need. And some strips will stop working if you cut them. This strip in particular was not designed that way. I was able to cut how much I needed and discard the rest. After I got the LED strips in and I got the adhesive attached, once I had all my layers on, then it was time to glue on my letters. And I'm just using basic super glue. This is honestly one of the best little adhesives to work with for 3D parts. I almost never have a problem with it staying. I like the Loctite gel version just because it's easier to control, but I super glued all the letters on. Once I had the one side done, I then flipped it over. You'll notice I put a solid piece of acrylic in the middle, and that was because obviously with the 3D print, it's cut all the way through. And so to try and sort of diffuse the glow a little bit so that it doesn't look as off on the opposite side. One of the things I think potentially could be done if you really wanted to was you do two layers of the 3D print, I guess, with like an opaque layer of black in the middle if you really wanted. But 
having tested this, I feel like I got a decent look on both sides with the glow coming through and this just helped kind of diffuse it a little bit. So again, patch all of the letters one more time and all that was left was to give it a test run and see how it looks. I'm fairly happy with how it turned out. Is it perfect? No. I completely forgot to cover the LED light in the strip in between the letters with some black electrical tape that would have likely covered them and prevented this extra glow lines coming through. It's an imperfect sign and it's still proof of concept and looks pretty good. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.